let's start with that. You know, for many people, whether they practice their faith or not, I think when a situation uh, like that is happening in the Ukraine happens, that big question is, where is God in all of this? Where is this loving God in a situation so distressing? It's a huge question, the problem of evil. What do we do? I think it's maybe opportune for us. Lent is now beginning. The 40 days, 40 nights of Lent are an opportunity for us to do something in a very tangible way for the people of Ukraine, for war in Europe. This is the first war in Europe since 1945. So how do we respond? I saw in the pandemic time, Wendy, how the domestic church became such an important part of our lives. I'm suggesting that we all might light a candle in our domestic church, in our homes, every day during Lent, and light a candle in our church. I, and I'm also re-echoing in a very strong way Pope Francis's message for the appeal around Ash Wednesday. But I'm saying not just for one day, let's do something every day of Lent. Where do we find God? Lent is about turning back to God. Let's find God in these peacekeeping initiatives, peacemaking initiatives that we all will engage in. One of the things as well that's really encouraging is, is seeing God in others. It's incredible to see here in Ireland and all over the world, just people responding with practical ways, but also with that, with prayerfulness and, and trying to have that sense of hope through the goodness of others, trying to, as you say, overcome the darkness. Absolutely. People are great. They're asking, what charity can we give that will help the people of Ukraine at this time? Phone calls are coming to Bishop's House Diocesan Office is asking, how can we help? What can we do? And yet, Wendy, the pictures from the airport, from Dublin Airport, the other evening, seeing young men heading back to Ukraine to fight for the country were the saddest moments in my lifetime of seeing images. I think we've got to try to get a message of peace out there and we as church have to be very proactive in doing that. Is it a time as well, Bishop Dennis, for that general awareness and conversation around not just what's happening in the Ukraine, but there's wars in other countries too and a civil unrest, think, thinking of places like Burma and Yemen. Is it a time for us as a, as a people, as a, as a faithful people to say, we want an end to all wars and peace across the world. Wendy, it's a very good point because Yemen is the largest humanitarian disaster facing our world and yet it's not getting any news reels, it's not getting any news time. We've, Burma, you mentioned there are many other, I think there's 40 different conflict zones across the world. Eight of the church needs are excellent at bringing these to our attention and we often at Red Wednesday in October, we highlight them in a special way. Naturally, Ukraine is in our prayers because it is in Europe and it's beside us, if you like. And we all know Ukrainians in our parishes, in our dives, in our families. So we're very much attached to them, but we shouldn't forget all the other battles that are happening. And when we have to remember, it only takes one person to start an argument, start a fight, to start a battle. Let us be the person who brings peace this Lent and not war. It's something that as well, you, you mentioned to me, Bishop, that even simple things of just not forgetting, you know, during the sign of peace, stopping for an extra moment, you're su suggesting maybe Absolutely. say an extra prayer in that moment. Absolutely. Essentially, light our candle in churches in our homes at the sign of peace, which we suspended during the pandemic for good reasons. We're not reinstating it yet, but we're saying let's pause at every mass during the sign of peace to pray for the people of Ukraine at this time and also to pray for the good people of Russia that sense may prevail. Mm. And thirdly, that we would pray a prayer together, which I'm encouraging everyone to pray that prayer in all our churches and all our dioceses, that we pray a prayer for the people. We were great to pray prayers during the pandemic for the end of the coronavirus pandemic. Let's now pray a prayer for the end of the conflict in Ukraine and all the other places, Yemen, Burma and everywhere else, where there is conflict at the moment. Um, finally, just to ask you, what would your advice be to somebody who is still, they're just challenged by, as you say, seeing these images on the news that are heartbreaking and, and thinking of the situation and it, some situations in our life can push us towards God, others can push us away. What do you say to someone who feels this is pushing me away from my faith, but I don't want it to, I want to be pushed towards rather than away? I think that they, those people, all of us, use Lent well and make Lent our journey to get closer to God, who at Christmas became incarnate one of us, but sadly these days lead to his suffering, his death, but also the joy of resurrection. There always is hope, Wendy, and we must have that hope. Well, we might finish with that prayer that you mentioned. Would you I'd like love to, to pray yeah. that, Great. if that's possible. Loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine. 
for all those suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray for world leaders, for compassion, strength and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for the world that in this moment of crisis, we may reach out in solidarity to our brothers and sisters in need. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice may become a reality for the people of Ukraine and for all the world. Amen. Amen. Bishop Dennis, thank you so much for Thanks, joining Wendy. us on iCatholic today. Thanks, Wendy. Lovely being with you and lovely to be with our friends on iCatholic. Thank you.